Welcome to the Awakened Healer Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth Vander Linden. I'm an ordained Christian minister, international intuitive healer, healer, trainer, speaker, and retreat facilitator. On the Awaken Healer podcast, myself and a wide variety of fascinating guests will share our gifts and divine experiences. I won't shy away from diving deep and asking big questions during these conversations. In turn, we will open up and share our deepest thoughts on spirituality, angels, intuitive development, crystals, healing of all kinds, and how bridging ancient wisdom with modern science can bring you to a deep and profound healing in every area of your life. Welcome to another episode of Awaken Healer. I'm your host, Mary Beth Vander Linden, and today I have the pleasure of having Sharon Lynn Wyeth back with us again. She was on actually, oh, about a month ago, maybe a little bit longer, and people were just fascinated with her. She actually owns the company called Know the Name, and she's written several books. Last time we talked about her first book, and today we're going to talk about her second book. It's really fascinating to me. It's called Know the Name, Know the Spirit. And so this book actually allows you to know about your life lessons, what you came here to be, what you came here to share. And so Sharon Lynn Wyeth is recognized internationally as a name expert, and she can actually determine your strengths, your challenges, and the purpose of your life by deciphering your name. She created Namology Science, the study of the placement of the letters in a name, and after 15 years of research, followed by three years of testing her theories in over 70 countries, she has come up with these different books and methods that you can learn through the books so that you can do this also. She just wanted to see if her methodology held true in different languages, and indeed it does. <laughs> so today, she assists HR departments of different businesses in narrowing down the candidates to be interviewed. She even assists lawyers in how to present cases to judges and couples and families on how to better communicate with each other. She also creates names for new businesses, new products, and Sharon's a frequent guest on both radio and television, so I'm really blessed to have her back with us today. And so welcome, Sharon. I'm so excited to speak with you again. Always nice to join you, Mary Beth. <laughs> Did you have a good Christmas? Um, yes. In fact, I celebrated early, so by the time actually Christmas came around, it was a day off just to do arts and crafts. I love oh, it. Nice. Yeah, a little <laughs> relaxation. <laughs> That's a good way to celebrate. Tell us a little bit more about Know the Name, Know the Spirit. To me, that's fascinating. Anything that's spirit-led, I'm all in. And so tell us about it. Well, first, I'd like to remind all the listeners that this whole thing came about because I have always been intuitive as a child. And then I began meditating at age 18. So I had meditation to help enhance my natural intuition. And so with the, my mathematically trained brain that always knows how to look for patterns, I started asking, what's our purpose in life? Besides knowing the personality through a name, can we learn our purpose? And so I would get intuitive hits and things that would come up during meditation. And then I'd go seek them out and trial and error and see if that was true and talked with hundreds of people to test things. So that's pretty much how this one came about. And so what the book shares with somebody is the seven lessons that we've come to learn. Now, we all have what I call the overarching umbrella because I just see the umbrella over our heads arcing over us. And so that to me is the picture in my mind on that's the reason we came. That's what we're trying to learn. And that's what the soul wants to accomplish. And then enable to do that, there are seven things in our name that show up. And if we can accomplish all seven of those, 
then we have learned and accomplished that overarching umbrella to learn. So there's seven essential things. Now, every once in a while, like I want to say every couple of thousand people, when I'm looking at their name, I look at it and go, oh my gosh, you must have asked for a special dispensation from the karmic <laughs> lords because my goodness gracious, you've given yourself way more than seven. The highest I've ever seen is 12. And like I said, it's very rare that I see somebody do that. And I think, my gosh, we're not wasting a minute. You had just piled it all on. Right. You know? And they wonder why they have such tough lives. So I look at it and I think you're definitely not wasting a lifetime, you know, trying to do more. And I think you had to have been successful previously and able for the karmic lords to say, oh yeah, she can handle this. We'll give her eight or we'll give her nine. And like I said, that one person that I saw at 12, I was just amazed. <laughs> anyway, so there's normally seven. And then to balance that out, we all have gifts in our name that we've come to share with others. So that as we're interacting with each other, we can learn from each other and we can share our gifts with each other. So that's what the book is about. Okay. Literally, why are you here? What are your seven lessons? And what did you come to share? And then the best part of the book, Mary Beth, is if your personality wants something different than your soul, how do you do negotiation and how do you do resolution? I would say always go with what the soul wants. But there's got to be some mediation sometimes in there. Well, that's fascinating. So something that you said caught my attention, seven lessons we came here to learn. But then you mentioned one time you saw someone with 12 and you were like, oh my gosh, you know, you kind of made it sound like they were going to have a rough life. So if I'm understanding it right, the more you have, the harder your life will be. Well, just think you have more you've got to accomplish during this lifetime. So it may not be harder per se, but you're going to be busier because you've got more to learn. Okay. And often it translates into harder just because you've got more to learn. It's kind of like as you get into college and then you get into your advanced degrees, your master's and your doctorate, the classes get harder. And so think about it as your normal 12 years in high school being your normal seven lessons. And then there's occasionally somebody will take an eighth or a ninth lesson. That's like a bachelor's. But 12, that's like the teacher of the doctorates. Okay. You know? All right. Yeah, that makes sense. So give us an example. Like I know last time we talked a little bit about the know the name and just like your personality because of your name and everything. So if you like looked at my name and, you know, the whatever comes up in the know the name, know the spirit book, how would you interpret like a name using those lessons that you learn in that book? One of the major lessons in your name, Mary Beth, is to learn how not to be taken advantage of by others and how not to be manipulated by others. <laughs> and so I want to say that by this time in your life, I hope you got it. But not necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a major lesson in your life. And another one that your name says is how to stand up for yourself because you're really good at standing up for other people, but it's like your voice gets caught in your throat when you go to stand up for yourself. Okay. So it's something else to learn how to stand up for yourself. And I was going to say the coolest thing is all the solutions are in the name. So how do we learn to stand up for ourselves? We pretend we're somebody else and we stand up for ourselves as if we're talking about somebody else until it becomes comfortable. Yeah, I mean, I am pretty good at standing up for myself, but people can take advantage of me or, you know, I'll put up with a lot, but take advantage of my children or my, especially my grandchildren, you better watch out. <laughs> and so that makes absolute sense what you're saying. So, so and hopefully, you know, during the seven, if I'm doing a reading, I can tell you when or what ages you've really come to learn a particular lesson that shows up in your name. Okay. So I want to say that as we age, hopefully we've gotten those lessons and that we're only, you know, working on the last one or two and not all seven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm starting all over again. I mean, during my life, even like I've changed careers so many times and other people found that like strange, like I would just do anything. I just wanted to learn anything and everything. And 
at Pillsbury, I even took a job of like their first ever girl Friday where they could just send me anywhere in the company. Like I had the top clearance. And so if the CEO secretary was on maternity leave, I'd go take her place. And then if somebody in word processing that was processing like sensitive documents was going to be out, I went and learned how to do that and, and filled in there. Or I'd go to a different department and create a job, train the people and, and hire them. And um, I just loved learning just anything. I loved all these different jobs and learning different things. But as I got older and settled into, I mean, and I became an ordained minister and I was in the healing ministry in churches, like pretty much through my whole life. But as I got older and stepped into healing as a full-time thing, then all that other stuff kind of fell away, you know, like the analytical aspects like if you can believe it or not, <laughs> I paid millions of dollars of bills for the Simmons Beauty Rest Company and then for Pillsbury. And now I don't even want to look at my checkbook to balance it. Like anything analytical, I'm just like, leave me alone. I've so switched over to the healing aspect. To the right side yeah. of the brain versus the left. Yeah, yeah. So it was interesting how in the beginning I started out on the left, but I was always real creative, either sewing or painting or whatever. So I always was nurturing the right side too. And when I don't do that, I can really tell the difference. Like I really miss my art studio and not being able to just walk out the door whenever I have that feeling to go paint. So it, it but it's, Everything you're saying and what you said last time makes so much sense to me. So I can verify that you actually know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> it works. What else can you tell us about this? Well, what's really interesting is often as a personality, well, I want to say swap around and do different things and try different things until it lands upon what it is that the soul has asked it to learn. Because until we land on what the soul has asked us to learn, we're just picking up pieces that are necessary for that particular task. And then there's some names that when I'm looking at them, like a lot of times when the parents are asking me, you know, how can I best help my child or what direction are they going to be going or whatnot? I mean, I can literally look at a name and then say, you know, your child's not going to settle into what their real career path is until and give them the age and then say, and that's because they have these other aspects that they've got to learn and explore first, because those are all sub parts of this final job or how they put it all together and how they use it. What about women? Like they get married and then they, you know, if they take their husband's name, their name changes. How does that affect that? The soul and what the soul wants is always in the birth name. So oh. it doesn't affect it at all. Now, okay. it affects the personality. It affects the last name when you're looking at personality designates what kind of people we attract to us. So when someone changes their last name, they're now listening to a different group of people or a different kind of people. And that's who's now being pulled into their lives. Interesting, because I've always wondered when I went through a divorce if I should have taken my maiden name back. And so you would have been the perfect person to speak to before going through the divorce as far as the name is concerned to see if the maiden name or the married name would be better suited or how does that go? Yes. What I do when that happens, uh, Mary Beth, is I literally say, this is what you're going to attract to you. If you're going with your maiden name, this is the type of people you're going to attract to you if you're going to your married name. And if you want to attract something different to you than either of those, let's create a new last name like what I did for me. <laughs> oh, okay. So why if that is not your last name? you That's the one you created? My last name. I bought and paid for it at the courthouse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So when you're looking at my name and you're telling me about me, you're going by Mary Beth Vander Linden. When I'm just picking out the life lessons that are in the Mary Beth part, because I didn't know if Vander Linden is your maiden name or your, you know, married it, name. It's my like ex-husband's name. 
Right. So I didn't pick anything out of there when we were talking because I wasn't sure how that last name was. Okay. So I picked it out of the Mary Beth. All right. Interesting. I might have to talk about that. Of course, at this stage of the game, I just turned 63 on Christmas Eve. I don't know that I want to go through another name change and social security and license and all that. So I guess I'll keep what I've got. You know, the social security office, when I went down to change my name, will only let you change your name three times. And then you're Really? Yep. So what happens with like Elizabeth Taylor, who was married seven times? Her social security name will remain as of her third name. Oh, how funny. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So do people get checks in the wrong name then? Well, you have to have then both names on your, you know, checking account. Oh, how strange. You know, and for a long time, like when I changed my name on my checking account, it literally had my previous name so that if somebody wrote me a check out of my previous name, I could still cash it. And what you do, according to the banks, is you write your name as it's written on the check, and then you write it as your current name. And that lets them know you were one, now you're the other, and they can look that up in your account. That is strange. All righty. Well, good to know, ladies. (laughs) Either stick with your maiden name through it all, or you're going to be stuck with the third husband's name. Well, or you make up your own. Yeah, yeah. You know, but if you've already been married yeah. several times, then you, it doesn't pay to make up your own because you can't go in and change it anyway, right? Well, I just, I just looked at it and I said, you can change it. You just can't change it on your social security card. All right. So let me ask you this, and especially this book, in what ways were you led by spirit as you were writing the book? Or did you feel spirit is the one who gave you the idea or that aha moment when you knew that was going to be your second book or in what ways in your life have you felt led by spirit? Well, I I consider my entire life that way, considering when I was in eighth grade or 13 years old, um, I earned a Bible down at the local church. Oh, I just got chills. And because there wasn't one in my house and I wanted to read it because I had already learned in school that You could take a paragraph or a short story and you could make it really mean or say anything you wanted it to, depending on what viewpoint, especially from what you lifted out of it, you know, part. And so I thought about it and I thought, you know, when they give us a section of something out of the Bible, they could be doing the same thing. Sure. And since I lived in a environment that was not um, inducive to trusting others, I literally thought, I want to read this for myself and see what it says so that if somebody's lifting something out of the middle and saying it really means this, I'll know the context around it. So it was really important to me to get to earn a Bible first so I get one sure, and then um, to read it. So once I got the Bible, it took me six weeks of memorization every Sunday and showing up and it's supposed to be a year long program, but I was in a hurry. (laughs) <laughs> and, so, um, and reciting as much as I can memorize every week. And, you know, that's my least favorite task in the whole world is having to memorize things. So anyway, six weeks later, I looked at it and I said, okay, how many pages in the Bible? How many days until the end of school? Divide them. How many pages do I have to read every night? So by the time the school year is over with, I have read the entire book. And I did that faithfully. That's and wonderful. While I was reading it, after, you know, a month or so of reading the Bible every night, I got this, it sounds crazy, but I got this voice over my left shoulder and it would say, well, that's the culture of the time and this is what else you need to know. And I literally thought, you know, childhood innocence, I literally thought that's why everybody tells you to read the book every single night because then you get the audio version with it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. And and so, and I noticed too that when I got through reading the book every night, the audio version went away, just like I closed the book and, you know, I turned off the audio. Anyway, and so from that time, I decided it would be really good to read a major text every year and make that the focus of the year. Now, that got inspired by my dad, who we would have these great dinner time discussions that we had a very large family. And 
he asked me one time, he says, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be a teacher. I want to share how to learn math because everybody struggles and it's not that hard. And so he said, well, how are you going to understand your kids? And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, well, if you can understand the different religions that your students believe when they come into your classroom, then you'll have a basis for where their thinking is and you'll you can connect with them faster. And then he jokingly said, and if you study all the different religions that are on the planet or the major ones, he said, then wherever we go when we die, if you've chosen to believe the wrong one, you can easily switch because you already know the tenets of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay interesting so that, perspective yeah so that was my dad's sense of humor That's so funny. with that I chose a different book and, and that discussion came after I had read the bible so every year I chose a different book and I did the same thing it was how do I get the book you know now I was tutoring math and earning money so I could actually buy the books and then how many pages how many days in the school year how much do I have to read every day and so I've read the major texts of the different religions. And as I was doing this, going through, you think about it from eighth grade through, you know, for five years through graduating from high school, you know, it's not what a typical teenager is spending their extra not at time. All. And so with that, I really said and made, I just, I love source. I love our creator, oh. you know, regardless of what name you want to label that energy with. Right. I, I just love that. And the and the major players in the different ones, even the ones that so messed up and look at their learning, them messing up what they taught the rest of us. I am just so grateful for them. And so I developed this incredible love of spirit. And so then when I was 17, almost before my 18th birthday, my sister came and she said, you know, I think it's really important to learn how to meditate because you get this special connection with spirit people in the East do after they've meditated 20 years. So my initial response was, well, if it takes 20 years, I best get started. You know, <laughs> instead of, oh my God, that's way too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so for my 18th birthday, which wasn't that far after this discussion, my sister gave me... Um, she paid for me to take classes and learn how to do transcendental meditation. And that's how I started meditation on my 18th birthday. I've been meditating ever since. And when I was 36, which is after I'd been meditating for 18 years, um, the voice came back. Oh, isn't that fascinating? And so, and then again, it disappeared again, but now it comes and goes. And I know that just sounds crazy. And it's more of a knowing. It's like I hear something with my soul. It's not that I'm hearing it with my ears. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. then it's just a knowing. It's like, oh, this is how that works. And so when I was doing these books, I would literally wake up at four o'clock every morning and I would sit and receive and I would be given hints or directions or have you tried this? Have you thought about this? You might want to look at this, <laughs> you know, those type of things. Right. And so I look at it and I think, you know, when we hear about different books being inspired, okay, to me, my books are inspired. I always call them anointed because when it's downloaded from spirit, there's just such an anointing and they just like, you know, there's certain songs that when you hear them, you just start crying or you get chills through your whole body because there's such an anointing on it. Or you read certain books and you just know that, you know, that, you know, that that has like opened up something new within you. It wasn't like just a book. You know, like some books, you read them and you throw them in a pond, you never think of them again. And then ones with an anointing on them, you just can't forget or you can't shake that. And, and you just know with everything in you that that was truth that you just read. And so everything you're saying, like as you're speaking different things, I'm, I'm sitting here trying not to start crying or I have chills all through me because I've experienced so many of those same things. But the voice and the knowing and the, but it's just ongoing. Like it just, 
you know, doesn't shut off unless I say, okay, I need a rest. I need a break, (laughs) you know, because when you call in your entire team and then like when I'm working with a client, I call in their entire team of guides, angels, ascended masters, even deceased loved ones that want to assist with the healing Or when you're doing a group or you're speaking in front of an entire conference, there can be thousands and thousands and thousands of spirit beings there. And they all talk at once. It's like when you go to a restaurant and everyone in the restaurant is talking at their own little table. So they think they're just having their conversation, but it ends up being like a roar and everything. So oftentimes I have to decipher within the roar of what they're really wanting me to say to the client or to the group at that time. And so it's fascinating talking to someone else has had a lot of these same experiences. So thank you for well, sharing I, that. I wish I could say that, that it was just downloaded. Uh, the directions were downloaded. The, right. This is what yeah, you they never give you the whole, the whole thing. It's just like little pieces. <laughs> it's like, here's, here's the guidance that what you need to do next, but they expected me to do the work. They weren't doing right. it, which I would think of as a straight download, um, which was good though, because as I did it, I got to test it and then see its authenticity and see it work and fine tune it. And you have definitely, because I've, I've experienced you, you know, not knowing me And just right off the bat, you know, just by my name telling me things, but I've also been, you know, at a conference where you did this in, in anyone that I've ever seen you do this with, they're always like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. I mean, you nailed me like, you know, and so I've seen it verified over and over how well this does work. I'm really fascinated by it. I know you have your first book. And tell me the name, know the name, know. Know the name, know the person, because it's all about the personality and how you can decipher anyone's personality from the placement of the letters in their name. And, and then this one is know the name, know the spirit. Correct. Third book coming out in January. It's January, right? That it's coming? Yes. January 7th is when it'll it'll pop on Amazon, or you can get the free ebook edition off the website, knowthename.com. And so that will be uh, know the name, know how to connect. And I always have believed in tithing or giving back. Right. So this book is really my way of giving back because it's, it's only, I mean, it's short, it's around 64 pages and it's very concise, easy to read, short, quick, here it is. Let me lay it out. No real extra fluff. You know, I mean, just enough so that you can get the picture of it. And it's literally, how do we improve our relationships? Because if you look at your quality of life, so much of it depends on your relationships. I mean, I have had the gambit of living out of my car at different times and to living in very nice places. And a lot of it was choices. Occasionally it wasn't. Right. Um, But I look at it and I think regardless of where your economics are, your quality of life really depends on your relationships and your health. And so I thought, okay, this can be my contribution to saying, how do we get to know somebody at a deeper level, authentically quicker? And so this is the book on how to do that. And what can you know about somebody that would be of value to help you connect immediately and to relate to that person you know, immediately. And then how do you sustain that relationship? What's needed by that person to sustain that relationship? For an example, in your name, Mary Beth, you love learning new things. So if somebody wants a long time relationship with you, you do not want to have the same conversation over and over again. (laughs) No. (laughs) You want to have new conversations. It's like, what are you learning? Oh, let me share with you what I'm learning. Let's have a discussion about different viewpoints about what we're learning. Okay, what are you going to be reading next or learning next? And so you want to keep around you people that are constantly learning and changing and growing. And stimulating. Yes. Exciting and stimulating. And yeah, that's exactly. And so I literally go through in how to quickly discern 
what does this person, if you want to be around this person, what does this person need to have a long sustaining relationship? What's the most important thing? You what know? about relationships? Like I, I know a lot of women are drawn to my teaching. And so we have a lot of ladies that will be listening to the podcast. And I know there's gentlemen too, not leaving you out, but maybe they've gone through a divorce and they're looking for a new relationship and everything. Does that help them to know like by a name, like this person isn't really suited to me so that they're eliminating all this dating? If you want to connect immediately on a date, get this third book that's coming out January 7th, Know the Name, Know How to Connect, which the ebook will be free on my website, knowthename.com. Okay, wonderful. So give us your website real slow again. And can you spell it? Because know the name and the nameology, they're not spelt the typical way. Did you say that's Latin? Oh, the nameology. Okay. So the website is know the name and know is a K-N-O-W, the name. Now, nameology science, I could not trademark a common word like name. So my dad suggested writing it in its Latin spelling for the air word of name. And in Latin, the word N-E-I-M is their word for name. And that therefore, nameology science, so I could trademark it, is spelled N-E-I-M-ology. Okay. And so what is your website? knowthename.com. Okay. I kept thinking that the nameology was in there somewhere. So I just wanted to make sure everybody really knew how to find you. Cause I'm, I'm, I know last time you were on, people were really fascinated. They wanted to connect with you. And so if they go to your website, you have a contact page on there. Yes. And the easiest way to connect with us is that just write us at info at knowthename.com info at knowthename.com. And this will all be in the show notes. So you can click on her links there when that goes up. So I appreciate all of you listeners taking time out of your busy day and spending it with us. I found her fascinating. I hope you did too. And Sharon, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day and joining me again. And once your third book comes out, maybe you'll come and be a guest again. Would love to, Mary Beth. You're always a joy. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. And everybody, have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me on the Awakened Healer podcast. Did you enjoy the show? If yes, please subscribe and give me five. On a review, that is. On iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave a review or your comments and let me know what you loved or would love to learn about on future shows. We all need encouragement, including me. Find out more information on my website at spiritledhealinginstitute.com. Be blessed and remember, if you're good with you and good with God, you're good.